wanted to uh, touch on first for a minute here is, or a couple minutes here, is just um, a tune-up. What I've been noticing from, from grading all these things, uh, there's still a lot of basic errors you guys are committing, and I want to make sure that, uh, that you know, one of our key things here in this class is to be able to look at data and do some basic data visualization, right, and some, some professionalism in terms of our graphs and things. So just as a reminder, uh, I wanted to, to remind you guys that whenever you're generating a graph for me or for your work or for any you know, official thing, make sure that you're labeling your axes. And uh, a lot of people aren't, just aren't doing this. And so, um, so label your variable. So the variable is the, is the, the thing that we're describing here, productivity, um, mortality, you know, something of that nature, right? And then, that's sort, of, that's sort of like the generic thing, right, that we're showing. And then, in parentheses, put the units, right? Grams per meter squared, uh, 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 kills per mile, you know, that, that kind of stuff, right? The, the units in parentheses, so that we understand what's going on. Every once in a while, when it's something very, very, very obvious, like the year, when it says 1988, 1989, 1990, you, you know, you don't, it's okay to leave year off of that axis. But it's not, it's not incorrect to say year. I mean, you could, you could say that. But, but some things are so obvious you can leave them off. For everything else, you guys should be having um, a variable and a unit. This, there is no average here. Do not say average. I'll say it again. Do not say average. Do not say average. Do not talk about the statistic. The statistic is how you're visualizing that variable um, with those units. And so you definitely probably want to s s describe that in your, dis in your uh, title, your uh, figure or something like that. But, but that does not go on the axis. So the axis is the variable and then the units that are being um, uh, used to quantify whatever we're measuring. Uh, measure, remember that we're for not every single graph, but for most of our graphs, the default thing is generally to put some central tendency and some spread of that data. So some central tendency of the data and how much that data has spread out. Make sure that you're calculating that correctly. It, it seems clear a lot of you guys are using the horrible Excel. Excel is a fantastic program for organizing your data. It's really crappy, as I've said many times, for making a graph, right? Um, uh, so it's great for doing the calculations for things, but for doing the visualizations, it's hard. And it seems that a lot of folks are still using the default click, click, pull down, push, 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 say this button, and, and it doesn't do it correctly. And you guys are using that. So you want to make sure your, your um, mean or your error bars are calculated and labeled properly. And then I really want to also emphasize that, that you're not, you don't barf out a graph, right? So when I say, hey, tell me, if graph this versus this. Um, and this is not busy work. I'm not trying to make, give you guys busy work. I really want to make sure you guys, this is a really powerful tool. This is a fantastic tool doing this data visualization. It helps us see patterns. It helps us say, hey, is there something going on here? Or is there nothing going on here, right? <clears throat> and what's the overall trend? And so um, think about it, right? Think about it before you just grab something and do some kind of pull down menu or whatever, right? What am I trying to show? So in particular, what is your replicate? What is my, what is my thing that I'm you know, graphing? Am I graphing the average of a thing? And I'm, am I grabbing an individual point? Um, what have you. Um, and we want, remember we're always trying to make apples to apples comparisons. Um, and we want to make sure the graph makes logical sense. So for us, our defaults are typically scatter plots, maybe some bar charts. Um, maybe a line graph, um, but those are not interchangeable. I'll say it again. It's not an aesthetic thing that we're choosing. There's different reasons why we might choose one of those or the other. And so, um, so we'll just look at a couple anonymized examples uh, real quick from some recent stuff you guys turned in, uh, just to sort of uh, go through this as a group to make sure we're, we're on the same page in a second. Um, but yeah, we want to make sure we're, we're asking a logical, um, or, or what we're generating makes logical sense. And that um, always a good idea to throw an interpretive title on there um, that, that really helps explain stuff. So remember, 
generally speaking, what we're doing in, in this class, basic data visualization, is generally two axes, an X and a Y. And generally speaking, this is the thing that is changing, that we're asking, hey, is this thing, if I change this thing, this X axis, does that lead to um, an associated change of the variable, a prediction of the variable on the Y axis? And generally speaking, if X didn't affect Y, this would be a, f a horizontal line. And it wouldn't matter if X was little, or X was medium, or X was big. It, would, it wouldn't really affect the level of Y. And if there is an effect, we would expect that Y would go up or down depending on, uh, depending on what the X is. Right? So that's what, we're trying to, that's what we're trying to look at. So, um, so for example, here's one where um, uh, this guy is, uh, here we have year here, we don't have year labeled. And this is a relative measure. In this case, it's perceived risk. And the, the various things are labeled. So this is Alaska, this is Norway, blah, blah, blah. In here, we say means plus or minus one standard error. So we know that, that those error bars aren't a range. They're not a coefficient of variation. They're a standard error. And again, you guys are free to choose the, whichever error, whichever characterization of the, of the variance you choose. But you just got to make sure you tell us what it is. Because sometimes it could be a range. Sometimes it could be quartiles. Sometimes it could be all different kinds of stuff. Um, cool. OK, so let's look at this. So let's have a look. So what do you guys think? How can we, how, what do you think about, and again, this is not, not, not naming who did this and it's not, not trying to single anybody out, but let's, let's just have a look at this. How can we make this, what do you guys think about this graph? So you probably recognize this as, this is our, um, one of our uh, Petrero uh, uh, visualizations. What about the units? On the y. Yeah. So the title says grass biomass, and then it says proportion of grass. So right. So so what is that? Is that proportion of species number? Is that proportion of grams per meter squared? What is it? So again, by making sure we have the units in there, that that'll help clarify the proportion of what the you know was it was it a weight thing? Was it a size of the bag? What was it? Um, Okay, and then another one, uh, uh, so, and then, right, there's no, there's no error bar description here. So we don't know what this is. This max and min, we don't know what this is, right? So again, everything we're doing is trying to make a really clear presentation, a really clear argument about our data. Um, uh, and then this was quadrat, eight being the farthest from the trail. Um, I mean, yeah, that's one way to do it, but that's kind of a crappy way. What's a better way to do the x-axis here? since you guys all did this lab activity. Did we just randomly label like quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three? No. So we, ha we actually had a very rigorous scale, right? That went from zero being the distance from the trail to farther away, right? And so, yes, it's true that we had eight quadrats, but they weren't eight meters away from each other, right? One was a half meter, one was a meter, one was, next one was two meters, and four, et cetera. So that's gonna paint a different picture than an evenly spaced sampling, which this implies. Cool? Make sense? Okay, cool. How about this one? What do you guys think about this one? 0 0.5, 1, 2, 4. Right, right. So again, this is what happens when you guys just grab some random stuff and, and, um, and so this variable, so this, the zero to half is cool. The half to one is totally cool. But, but this is saying that two is just as far away as half meter is. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not. It needs to be spaced out on the, on the correct um, distance away. What else? Yeah, you don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys could put a trend line in, but that doesn't really help us too much. But that trend line is definitely going to be absolutely wrong, whatever, because we've not, we don't have this spaced out correctly. So it's going to be, the trend line is going to be weighted incorrectly. So even though you can do these things, these programs let you do stuff, it's just like AI. It's just like chat GPT. It looks really cool, like, oh, hey, I can do that. It almost always lies to you. 
right? And so it's an interesting tool to look at or whatever, but, but if you don't understand the, the base of the program, it, it, it gives you a pretty output. And you might think, oh, this is cool, and it'll lead you astray. Um, okay, good. And then uh, what else? Anybody knows anything about the error bars? No label. No label, and they look identical, right? So, so almost never are our error bars identical like that, right? So there's, there's, some are going to be a little bit bigger, some are be a little bit smaller. So this is an indication that that probably wasn't calculated correctly. Okay, cool, good. How about this one? <laughs> okay, we have distance here. We probably want to say distance from trail, right? So it's clear, distance from trail and then in meters. So but we, ha we have the variable, cool, we have the units here. Over here we have biomass. We have biomass! It's, 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 actually, it's actually just one word, but that's cool. We have biomass. Um, uh, but it's cool. And, and we have in grams, it's actually grams per unit area, right? So, so we'd say grams per, technically you'd say grams per, in this case it was like 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 uh, you know, meters or, or multiply it through and then say 0 0.625 square meters. Cool? Okay, I mean you could. I mean, I mean that's a stylistic thing, but okay. So and then and then we, we do have it labeled, right? There's different ways we could put it in the title. We could put a little text box like this, uh, you know, either way. But somehow we want to make sure that the viewer um, knows what the, the variables are. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. How about this one? So this is a common one some folks um, uh, did. Um, and uh, so so first, tell me about this with this figure. What do you guys think? I'm sorry, say again, Sophie. No, I just said I want to cry. Yeah. You want to cry? Why do you want to cry? It just seems like too much. It's harder. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, again, so, so these, things that I'm, these things that we've been doing all semester, right, it's about, hey, tell me about this pattern. Is, there a, is X related to Y? Like, can we see something going on here? And so, so I would just say, to follow up that point, when I, when I look at this, I, I just kind of see like Heartbeat of America or something like, oh, do -doom, do -doom. like you know, it's like stuff's kind of going up, stuff's kind of going down. I don't really see any particular huge story. I mean, I mean, some things like, like this guy sticks out. There's something about this red peak here that's higher than the others. But with the exception of some of those high peaks, I don't really see any, I don't really see anything in particularly noteworthy, right? And so this says, so in fact, the graph here says vehicle count versus some kill count. Is that what, is that what we're showing here? Right, so, so th these are the different uh, sites. These are our different transects we did, right? Where we look for, for roadkill, right? And so um, uh, this is a visualization. This might be useful the very first time you just threw it together to take a quick look at the data, right? It's not necessarily quote unquote wrong per se, but for, our, for this particular prompt, it was, hey, tell me, I'm asking you guys to show me or, or see if you can find a relationship between, where is it? between this thing and this thing, right? So the, the b best thing is to put this thing on this axis and this thing on that axis. And then see if they, do they, do they make a line that, that you know, kind of goes up to the right? Do they make a line that's just horizontal? What? And so, so, this, is, so this is very common. This, this, a, lot, a lot of times I find you guys do this, that you're used to making a bar chart or something of that nature, and it's like, oh, I'll do that. But make sure you're looking at what the prompt is asking or, or, or what, the, what the hypothesis we're trying to test is, right? And so um, don't necessarily run to do whatever you, you saw before. Make sure that the visualization is going to um, test those things. How about this one? Same kind of idea, right? So when we have traffic, but we don't have, we don't, we don't have the... Um, we don't have the units, so it would be nice to know what the units are. This is, you know, vehicles per hour or whatever it is, right? And then this one is, again, so this is supposed to be richness uh, versus traffic. You know, I, I don't get that. So, so there's a tendency you guys want to take your template that you know or that we've talked about 
and then, and then put your data on there. No, we want to do X versus Y. We want to do this thing's relationship to this thing. And so a scatter plot generally is probably the best one for that type of, for that, uh, that approach. Make sense? We also didn't label our, didn't label our error bars here. Okay, same thing, right? Uh, how about this one? Yeah, right. So, so it looks like there's maybe a, a miscalculation here in how we got to the actual number, but the overall layout looks, looks, you know, looks better than these other ones, right? So we, had, we have our x variable here, and we have our y variable here, even though maybe we didn't quite do the y variable exactly um, correct, um, or we summed it up instead of averaging it. And so, so that's another good point, which is what is our replicate, right? So, so here, um, it looks like uh, you guys, and again, a common error, so, so it happens fairly frequently, right, is, um, hey, what's the richness? So I think what happened was this, was this was road segment whatever, you know, I don't know, East Fifth Avenue or Oxnard Boulevard or whatever the hell it is, right? And so I think somebody went, hey, okay, what's the total richness for the whole thing, right? And, and, uh, and, and got that because we have here, we're having like 11, right? So 11 would imply that every single time we did a transect, on average, we, we averaged a richness of 11 um, different species killed, right? That, that, so that's not quite right. So, so go ahead and do this, cool first draft, but make sure it passes the smell test, right? Before you guys turn it in, just like take a break, step back for 30 seconds, take a breath of air, hmm, then, oh, okay, does this make sense? Right, you know, read the graph back to yourself or show it to your bud, or show it to your, 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 your partner or your roommate or whatever. Hey, what do you think this says? What do you think this, what do you think this? Because sometimes we're, we're like, you know, we're all stressed out in the semester. We got all these things to come in and we're like, oh my God, just gotta get this done. Um, don't go so fast that you, um, that you do a misstep. Um, another one, you guys get the idea, another one. Okay, cool. And then, um, and then lastly here, I just wanna say, uh, let's also, um, so, I'm, um, have fun with this stuff, right? I know this is hard, and you guys are like, oh my God, I have so much work, I don't wanna think about this, but, but generally these, these, when I ask these open-ended questions, I want you guys to sort of uh, think about stuff. And, and what seems to be happening is we talk about vehicles, uh, you know, we, we've done some graphs on, on vehicle, uh, or, or does, uh, do the number of vehicles influence uh, or predict the kill rate, right? And that's cool, we did some things. And the next question is, hey, what might, what might explain what's going on? You're like, ah, vehicle kills probably explain what's going on, right? Think about all this kind of stuff. So um, here is the sum data. So this is all calculated for you guys, right? So here's the stuff. So I, 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 we put together, so this was the, the Santa Barbara region, the number of kills per mile per, per survey, right, per day. And then this was the, um, what was on the side of the road, right? And then this was, um, the ecosystem, the, the biological community nearby, yeah? And just about everybody, if not everybody said, talked about uh, uh, vehicle uh, or, or traffic density, right? Which is, which is fine, that, that's a fine thing. But very few, if anybody commented on other stuff. Do you guys see anything here? Do you see any, any, any noteworthy patterns here that might explain roadkill? I mean, in this case, roadkill, but it could be, it could be whatever the thing is, right? St st stare, at, stare at this one first. Let's look at this first grand meme one first. Is a road a road a road? Are they all the same rate? No. Some are higher than others, yeah? So some are like, you know, 0 0.2 kills per, per mile. Others are 0.03, right? Up in the Los Padres, very low kill, very few kills encountered per mile traveled. Whereas in these other spots around Ojai, it's orders of magnitude higher, right? That's what you guys should be looking for. So there's, there's one. So depend on the region, it, it, it's different. And then how about this one? Is there, is there, does, it, does it matter what the stuff is on the side of the road? Does that tell us anything about roadkill? Yeah. yeah, right? So check it out again. Uh, we range from uh, uh, sections of the road that 
are just open, that don't have any barriers, have kills about every 0.15, uh, or, or there's a kill every 0.16 miles, right? Whereas other things, like let's say fenced areas, again, have an order of magnitude lower kill. So that, that, that seems interesting to me, those, those two, two interesting patterns. And then let's look at this one last one here, the different, ecos, the different types of surrounding ecosystems. Does that make a difference? Yeah, yeah right, and this guy, right? So this guy the, at the beach, there's a kill every four miles on average that you drive. Whereas, again, these other places, order of magnitude lower. So yes, um, uh, of course, if there were no cars, it wouldn't be any kills. So there's some relationship with vehicles, just kind of by thinking about it. But right when I give you guys all this data, the hope is, and I ask these open-ended questions, I'm hoping you guys would, would look at these kinds of simple things. Right? You don't need to spend hours and hours, but these broad, basic patterns, look, see, hey, I wonder if. Um, so that's what I'm hoping you guys will do when, you, when you're, when you're crafting some answers or, or thinking about how you might visualize stuff. So, um, so we just saw from here that the region matters or seems to matter. We haven't done the height statistical test yet, but, but, but qualitatively it seems to have an impact. The stuff on the side of the road seems to have an impact and where the ecosystems are seems to have um, a pretty big impact. And it looks like uh, the beach and maybe the riparian areas and maybe the exurban areas are, are where the, all the action is. And that, that row crops, like on the Oxnard Plain, not, not super interesting. The mountains, not super interesting, right? So that's the kind of stuff I'm hoping you guys look at before you start doing your graphs, right? So, so have a look at all the data, if, if I give you a data set, and sort of look at it for a few minutes. Don't just sort of immediately grab and say, what do I have to grab? What do I have to average? Look at it, explore. And, and use that also when you guys graduate and go on to your, your careers and your work or whatever, right? When someone gives you something to do, don't just like barf it out. Like, take a second, step back. Let me look at the big picture here. What, 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 am, what, what are the variables I'm looking at? Okay, this, that, and this, that, and this, that. And is there any kind of gross relationship between this and that? Oh, it looks like this goes high, that goes low. Okay, cool. So yeah, so to, as a reminder, uh, make sure we're labeling our, all of our axes, right? With the variable and then the units in parentheses. Um, uh, Make sure that your central tendency and all that kind of stuff is labeled and passes the smell test. And um, think about what your replicate is, right? Uh, and generally speaking, you don't want to do summing. So a lot of you guys, where, where the appropriate would be to do the average, like the central tendency, you guys will sum stuff up like that, like that richness there that wasn't really appropriate. So generally speaking, don't sum things up. Generally speaking, take the average, right? And that's also why we don't say how many road kills we, uh, how many surveys we did. We standardize it by the number of surveys, right? By the, by the length of road, by the number of surveys. Always trying to create an apples to apples, a fair comparison um, of, of uh, biomass or whatever the heck we're doing. Um, okay, uh, yeah, cool. And then uh, I didn't say this, but, but if you are gonna put a title, is, is it wrong to say, X versus Y, no, but that's, that's kind of lame, right? It's better to say no effect of traffic on roadkill or something like that, right? So to help lead the viewer into your stuff. Does that make sense? All right, cool.